Hi, this is Chris from Robosprout and Robosprout.com. Just thought I'd walk you through some of the setup I have going on here for my test setup. This is a Smoothie Board V2 wired up with quite a few little expansions on it, along with a standard 3D printer setup. Uh, it has two Y motors, two Z motors, both paralleled. The X and the E are both standard configuration. I have the heaters down here, along with my lighting being controlled and fans. Uh, two thermistors in, one for bed, one for uh, part of the failsafe, which I'll go through a bit later. Um, the power supply is being controlled, which is actually the failsafe uh, via this SSR relay here. We have the 5 volt out, which drives the Raspberry Pi and touchscreen, which is running SmooPi. <clears throat> and uh, then we have USB going to the Raspberry Pi. We have a connector here which goes to the failsafe which is plugged in to the GH and it gives you extra thermistor inputs as well. Uh, this is the thermocouple board which currently is not working due to configuration error. And then up here we have an expansion board which has the PWM out for the VL touch along with the kill button input for my uh, failsafe return back to the board. Now. All of the failsafe is being controlled by this thermo thermistor board here, which uh, takes two thermistor inputs and your standard 100K, doesn't really matter which type, feeds them in through a buffer ESD protection, has an op-amp uh, driver chip there which buffers everything and cleans it up, and then outputs it to your standard, well, I guess they would go to a raw ADC, they're the T1 outs and T2 out, and then down here you have a trigger. So after the op-amp, um, it feeds it into a comparator, which you can set with the potentiometers there, and uh, you set a trigger point. So this is a dumb failsafe. It will trigger no matter what. This doesn't rely on an MCU or anything. If your thermistor goes out of range beyond what you want, it will shut off this trigger. Now that trigger feeds back and goes to, this is called the flambe hub. Now what this does is it's a, large relay driven by a smaller relay driven by a NAND gate buffer and then before that there is a uh, debounce chip, a max chip which uh, cleans up everything and gives you a whole bunch of protections and security so you, this thing will not trigger off unless you really have a fault. Now your faults are driven by either the thermo, the, whatever you want. I currently have the two thermistor boards on there and then I also have a smoke de detector up top and along with that, it has an MCU control, which feeds back to my control board. So the control board, if it goes into kill, will shut this off. Now, if this board gets triggered by any of the other inputs, it will also shut off the control board and give a kill signal, which will kill the whole print. So it'll shut the motors off. Since the motors are not wired to this, they are wired to their own input. This controls just the uh, FET in currently because that's the way I want it because my 5 volt regulator is driven off of this board here. Since the Smoothie Board V2 has a 5 volt 3 amp on there and it's a TMC 2660 on this variant um, which I'm running all my motors off of. Uh, there's quite a bit more features. Now here this little board is a UART board. Uh, Jim has requested that anybody who needs help with their config from him directly needs to have a UR log. I've supplied these to all the Kickstarter backers. I'm also going to have them on my site. It's just something I made. Now you feed that down and Jim has set up SmooPi so that it can, uh, has it in his tool menu here. He has a start UART log and it allows you to log the UART there. Now what the UART log on V2 gives you is significantly more than you ever got off of V1 Smoothie. So I'm going to issue a reset here just to give a demonstration. As you can see, it basically goes through and verifies your entire config. Now, since I have a config error, notice there's two flashing LEDs there. That would be a single light if everything was working right. My config error is back here due to the way I set up the SPI for the thermocouple. I obviously configured it wrong, so it gives you that back. 
you know, I, even I make mistakes all the time. And so this is good for everybody. I mean, this just tells you everything is working. And if it's not working, it gives you the exact error. And then you can report back. And if you feed this log to Jim, you know, after if you were, or any of, our, of the smoothieware devs, we can pretty much tell you exactly where your config is going wrong. If you know, if you haven't already figured it out on your own. Now, aside from that, this has up to eight inputs here, and this can give you uh, plus the MCU. So you can actually have, you know, whatever you want, E stops or uh, fail, you know, emergency stop buttons, light curtains, flame detector, smoke detector, pretty much whatever you want to put on there. Uh, thermocouple boards, you know, with a comparator similar to what the uh, board here for the for the thermistors has. Uh, but basically this will shut off the high side. It shuts off all your power going in for that and supplies a fuse if there is a fault. Now, nobody's really done this much on any of these boards yet. Technician's tap. So we started kind of lightly putting some things on there. On the back side of this V2 board, there's a high side FET, which controls these four uh, MOSFET outs here. So those have a high side FET, which can be driven up to about eight amps. I would probably stay at around seven to be safe. And if you need, you need more than that, you can, you know, bypass the high side FET or whatever for independent, independent FETs if you'd like. Uh, but that is a, just an extra layer of protection. If anything goes into halt, it shuts the power off to your heaters. Same thing this does, but this is built into the board. And in theory, you know, a relay is probably more robust than the FET is because if the low side FETs fail, probably what killed the low side FETs is may kill the high side FET too. So you're, you can't really rely on that. But the, the purpose is to if you were, say, to have a therm thermistor fallout or a thermistor fault where your heater just kept heating up and heating up, um, and then your board tries to shut it down in a halt, and your FET's stuck on, or if your FET's just stuck on without a thermistor fault, um, it will just keep heating, and the hot end will melt down, and then you'll have a fire, you know, or potentially a fire, if not you know, damage or whatever. So the purpose of a high side FET is to shut off the power supply line also as well as the low side switching. So if it, the low side switching fails, it's supposed to shut off the high side also. Now, again, that could potentially could be a problem also, which is the purpose of this relay. This relay is held on. It's held on by a smaller relay, which is driven by another uh, chip, which is driven by another chip. This thing basically has to be, everything has to be on for it to work. Um, now, if we had a fault, like say here, I go into here and I issue a kill. Now, it will, since it's driven by the MCU, it's pulling all of them down. So all of them trigger as a fault because that tells you, oh, the MCU is doing it. One LED is bad because of, uh, you know, uh, some rework I did there. Anyways, but um, now if you clear it, now it's back to functional again, and it's not faulted, and so everything's up and running. You have your power back on. You can see the VFET power's on because the red LED is on here on the smoothie board. Um, red is VFET, orange is motor, green is 3.3 .3 volt, and then the blue are the signals for other things. Now on here, red is red would be off a fault, green is on. Uh, pinks are independent triggers telling you which one is triggered uh, so that if it's a smoke detector or whatever you can you know it'll trigger a fault now I'm gonna make this thermistor trigger a fault here and see it tells me that one thermistors triggered and it's uh you know I should be able to by that go back and look up at the pin and know which one is triggered because it's it corresponds to that all right, so now all this is just basically to add more protections and fail-safes to try to keep everything a little bit more safe. Um, you know, the, the potential for fire is mostly from your hot end. Uh, your bed, typically, I mean, you can get a fire from it, but usually it's going to be in the wires or in the connector being loose on the bed, from what I've seen. Uh, they usually don't get hot enough to start a fire unless they're directly shorted across or something like that. Hot ends, on the other hand, are your problem.
if that thing if those melt down they can cause potential problems especially if you're running 40 watt and 70 watt heaters uh, in them there's huge potential for air there so these the point of these boards was to protect around that uh, again you're never going to protect around it fully nothing's foolproof but you can add more layers to the onion and try to keep things going a little better all right i hope this explained a bit talk to you more later